Hello, my friends. It's time for another fantastic Revit tip. Now, this Revit tip comes to you guys because I had a client contact me and say, you know what? I think our template is a little bit big. And when I looked, friends, it was 288 megs, okay? And I had to agree that's too big. The idea behind a template is to have it lean and mean. And I'm thinking about changing the way I do things, actually, because all along, whenever I'm teaching people how to run, you know, use Revit, I've advised them to make a template that has all the things that you use in every single project should already be there in the template. And that's what I've always said. And I'm starting to question that because as soon as I say that, people say, well, I use this door in half of my projects, but not all of them. So it goes in. And I use this window, about a third of my projects. And that's that's enough. I mean, that, that window goes in. And, and these plumbing fixtures and this specialty equipment and this these cabinets and these and and the list goes on and on and on about all the things or that people put in their templates. And at first I thought that was a great idea. If you're going to be using it, it should be right there. I mean, just grab it, use it really fast. But I'm starting to realize that it, once your template starts getting puffed up, that means your projects are going to be puffed up. Because what happens when you click new project and it uses your template to create the project, it basically makes a copy of your template. It disconnects itself from the template. So when you make changes or delete things or add things, it's not deleting and adding and changing the template. It's It makes a copy, Revit makes a copy of your template to start your project. But however big your template is, that's how big your project's going to start. So every one of their projects starts at 288 megs. So I'm working with them and we are stripping that thing down. And I've come to the conclusion that your template should be stripped down, clean as a whistle. Okay. And here's what I'm talking about. I'm going to share my screen. Share my screen with you, my friends. Okay, here we are. Now, <clears throat> my personal template is not stripped down. Let me just say it's not. Because I have like a little building in there that I do, I use for doing Revit tips, okay? I have the building in my it, you know, it's that two-story building that you see all the time in my template. So I don't do as I do, do as I say. What I'm suggesting is this. Now, let me just show you on screen. Okay. I suggest your plan view is clean, clean, clean. Look at this. Absolutely clean. There's nothing here. But I do believe in having an existing plan ready to go with the phase set to existing so that if you're doing a renovation project, you would go to the existing plan and the existing floor plan and start putting in your building. I think that's a great idea because there's no geometry here and it doesn't weigh down the, the template. You can have a demo plan also ready to go so that it automatically, when you start demolishing existing objects in the new construction phase, they start getting dashed. Boom, automatically. Setting up views is a great practice, and I advocate that highly. You can have your um, life safety plans ready to go. No geometries there, 
But the view template is preset so that things start looking correct and it's ready to go out of the box. So views, your elevations. Look, I've got elevations sitting in here and they're pointing at nothing because there's nothing there. This is the area right here in the middle where I would start drawing my building. But there's nothing here. And the legends are sitting here ready to be used. I think I've got... Like, look at this. You can have an ADA um, blocking diagram legend. You can have life safety items legend and reflected ceiling plan um, items legend. You can have legends ready to go. And I think I advocate that highly. And I advocate having schedules ready to go. Because when you put a door in, your first door in the project, bam, it'll pop into your door schedule. If you put a... A, um, you add sheets, They'll it'll add to the sheet list schedule and windows, new windows or specialty equipment or like toilet and bath accessories. As soon as you start placing them, it'll start populating these schedules. That I advocate highly. But I think there are temp, oh, and sheets. I think you should have sheets pre-named and ready to go so that you can drag views onto them, speed up your workflow. So having views preset, having your um, legends and schedules and sheets preset is a great idea in your template. And your template can be so stripped down and so beautiful with nothing else in it, okay? except your annotation objects waiting. I suggest you purge out all of your geometry families. I know I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think that's the right thing to do. Your annotation family should be ready to go. Like all of your, your tags should be ready to go and any annotation objects ready to go. Don't purge out your, um, your dimension styles that you use on a you know on a regular basis, and don't purge out your your um, your text styles that you use in your project. Those are annotation objects; they should be in there. But strip out everything that's geometry. Strip it. But Mike, how are we going to progress forward with the things that we love that we? our favorite things that we know we're going to use. Well, you see, your template is going to be so small when you do this stripped down, clean template that when you start a project, it's going to be super small. And it's only going to grow as you add only, wait for it, only the things you actually need for this project. And you'd say, but Mike, where do I put those so I can get to them fast? Well, here's my suggestion. You make a project called the warehouse. Okay? I'm going to click on that. This is a separate project. This is not my template. This is the warehouse. So I can have my project up and running, bam, right here. Okay? And I go pop over to the warehouse and I can grab any object from my warehouse and copy it and then paste it into my project. And it comes with all of its materials. It comes with all of its settings. It comes with everything. It comes with everything that you need right over into your other project. Only the things you need and not you don't want all this. What I've got on screen in my current warehouse is just an example for you. This has um, this right here. Look at this. I'm just going to kind of glance around and show you what we've got. We've got all of the exterior doors that we typically use in a project and all the exterior windows that we typically use in a project. But uh, if I want a double hung, a double, if I want a triple, if I want a small window, I can just grab it, whoop, 
copy and paste it into my project. I've got some different floors and slabs that I can bring in. Look here. Every exterior wall that I love, that I have created, that I plan on possibly using in projects, but I'm not going to use every one of these in every project. I can just come grab one, copy it and paste it, and then use it. This is a warehouse. I come here. Here's all my interior walls, okay? Here's my interior doors. Only grab the ones I need and paste them into the project. Kitchen layouts. Let me just walk through this quickly. Kitchen layouts, typical laundry rooms, bedroom furniture, typical stuff, typical bathroom layouts. Like if I was gonna do like a hotel or a university housing project, these are my typical bathroom layouts that I love. I've already figured out the dimensions. Copy, paste, done. Typical bedroom layouts, okay? Kitchen items, bath items, these uh, refrigerators. I don't need all possible refrigerators in my template. Just the one I plan on using in this one project. I would copy it and paste it, okay? And then I've got cabinets. I've got countertops. I've got... Is stoves and, and wall cabinets, floor cabinets, specialized, specialized pocket doors, louvered doors, barn doors, bifolds, anything that I truly need and I believe that I'm going to use on a regular project, I just put right here in the warehouse, copy and paste into my project and run with it. I know this sounds simplistic, but all you need to do whenever you get a brand new family that you love, that you plan on using in your projects, put it in the warehouse. Put it here in the area where it works best. The category, whether it's a bathroom or a kitchen item or a bedroom item, an exterior wall or window, you can place it here in the warehouse ready to go. So you have a, on your, on, let's just say, <clears throat> I'm going to come back to you right now. On your server, you have a really clean, stripped down template that is ready to go, but with no families loaded to bog it down. It, you guys know what I'm talking about. And then have another a project called Warehouse. And the Warehouse, you open up and you just copy and paste as you need into that project. You will find that your project sizes reduce dramatically if you do this. All right. Now, I know that was an oversimplified idea, but I just want to throw it out there as a rev tip for you guys that are finding that your templates are getting bloated. They're getting a little bit too big. Make yourself a warehouse file. Put your favorite things in there and nothing else. Just don't overcrowd it. Those are your favorite stuff, the stuff that you're going to use. But don't dump them into your template, all of it, because you're not going to use every single one of those in your template, and you know you're not. Don't. Do it. Keep your template mean and clean and ready to go. All right. That's about enough. I've babbled on. That's my new idea that I would like to present to you guys. Let me know if it works for you to have a very tiny template so that your projects can start out nice and small and a warehouse for all your other stuff. All right, man. You have a fantastic Rest of your day, and I'll talk to you soon. Happy revving. Okay, bye-bye.